Hi, I'm Marjorie Helmer, and this is Baking Buyers Baking Channel. Today is the first stop on our tour to discover America's bakeries. This is a show to recognize the people, and often family businesses, who work extremely hard to satisfy our nation's collective sweet tooth. Our first stop, Kansas City. While Casey is known throughout the country for its legendary barbecue joints and fine steakhouses, it's also home to some quality bakery shops. And it's not far from the nation's breadbasket. I'm standing in front of the Kansas City Board of Trade, where more than 10 billion bushels of wheat can be traded in a single year. The Board of Trade is also home to the producers of this show, Sosslin Publishing. Since 1922, Sosslin has served the grain-based foods industry with trusted insights through a variety of trade journals and websites, including Milling and Baking News, Baking and Snack, and Baking Buyer. So come on, let's go discover what's baking in Kansas City. Hello, I'm Judy White. Welcome to Judy's Bakery Cafe in North Kansas City, Missouri. Our first store opened in 1979 in September, which our 30th, 30th year anniversary is coming up next month. And we opened in Kansas City, Kansas, where we lived and were both born and grew up and was raising our children. It was for my husband's sake at the time. He wanted, uh, I'd always encouraged him to go into business for himself. I didn't think it would be a bakery. Uh, we'd never been in that line, uh, but he could not, he doesn't especially like donuts, and he likes sweet rolls. And at one time he went out to get a sweet roll at this very famous bakery in Kansas City, Kansas, the Carl's Bakery, and they'd closed. The area had degenerated and all of his customers had moved. and. Um, so he came home and said, let's open a bakery. I thought, well, okay, we can do that. <laughs> I went to work at, um, I asked um, one of the bakeries in Argentina if I could come there and work on Saturdays because uh, of my other job. And they said, sure, I just volunteered to get the flow of the front end. And um, it's pretty basic, but you know, you learn some you pick up some clues and to get a feel for it. And my husband took two week vacation from his job, which was in bottled gases, medical and welding gases, and worked at a Bud's Bakery, which was in the area. And went in a night and volunteered. And then we proceeded to search for equipment. Well, we went to a Retail Bakers Association convention and of course everything there was new and shiny and we thought, uh-oh, <laughs> plan B. Uh, we went to an auction in Atchison, Kansas, where I think we spent less than $500 and bought our first oven, which was in a pile. It was dismantled. No one else showed up for it, the auction, and we bought our oven and several other items that were needed. And my dad's very handy in um, rebuilding. He understands machinery. And it made it look like new and went in. They built or found the parts needed. And it was generally a family effort. Without him, we wouldn't have had all of our equipment. And uh, we started the process in May. In September, we opened. Uh, of course, we worked for two days to prepare all of our items, because creating the dough and mixing and then retarding and then baking. And the first day, everything sold. Everything, there was nothing left. <laughs> we thought, uh-oh, we're in trouble. <laughs> but he hired uh, four people to help. No one there had had a background in baking. Uh, it was all learned, and we were very fortunate soon after we opened. I mentioned the Carl's Bakery, uh, Henry Carl. He's a wonderful man. He's in his 90s now. Uh, 
He came by just to say hi. He was in a slight depression from having had to give up his bakery. He was born in that bakery. His children were born in that bakery. And it was quite an emotional thing for him to have to give it up. And uh, so we invited him, you know, well, come in and use our kitchen. I said, I know several of your customers are now our customers and would love to see you. So he would come in on Saturdays, make a couple of his uh, favorite items, a caramel nut angel food and a raisin surprise. And people, we just advertise it's going to happen and they would order hundreds of loaves and hundreds of cakes. and. He said it was a blessing to him uh, that it got him in through the transition of retirement. And uh, of course, we were the ones who reaped the rewards because that brought so many customers to us, gave us some more credibility. And it did give us, it, he taught so much to my husband, because my husband was in charge of production. I was in charge of retail, the books, and the cake decorating. Um, and it was fun. Fortunately, I didn't realize that only 10% of small businesses such as this make it, and 90% do not. We thought we just, you go in there with a good business plan, make a good product, listen to your customers, and everything worked well. Um, we were fortunate it did work well for us and we're still here 30 years later but with a lot of adjustments. Mm -hmm.